All right, welcome back. I am starting this video on what is my third shoot today. This morning, I shot sunrise down at the beach down here. And then I can take you down and kind of give you an idea of that in a minute. I'll tell you about that shoot. I also shot uh, the Milky Way rising over the east side of Thayer Lake over there last night. And I also shot that down from on the beach here. Um, and so I'll tell you about those in a minute, but first I'll show you this third shoot that I'm doing. It's kind of one that I've thought about doing a few times and just never really come out and done it because I, I kind of feel like it's because, you know, it's like right in my front yard. Um, I, I'm always kind of like, well, I can do that whenever I want. I'll, go, I'll get to that some other day. And, uh, but I don't know, I just kind of today was like, there's a day to do it, Let's, why not do it today? It's kind of that weird, kind of harsh, but kind of mellow light, and uh, that's perfect, because what I'm doing is up there, none of the trees have leaves on them still, and I'm trying to basically just silhouette the branches, all the empty branches, against this very white, bright white sky. And so what I've got here is my slider, looking straight up this tree with all the branches up there, and it's gonna pan from that direction with the sun on the right to this side and looking over that way. And I think the sun will still be on the right side of the tree. Uh, it's gonna set in a general this way direction. It's gonna go from up there and it's gonna set down here or up here somewhere. It's gonna kind of go like that. So yeah, I don't know. This, might, this is kind of one that I'm just kind of doing to try and experiment and we'll see how it comes how it comes out if it comes out good like a proof of concept then i'll shoot i'll kind of figure out what i need to do to actually shoot it so it looks like i want it to look what i'm thinking i think i got a late start on it it's about 3 15 in the afternoon i think i needed to start this probably at least an hour ago maybe an hour and a half two hours ago and this is one i would just set up and let it run all afternoon go for four or five hours um, right now I got it going for three hours, so it's 3.15 now. I'm going to come back and pick it up. At, well, I mean, come back. I'm right in the front yard. So I'm just going to come out and get it at like 6.15 and get putting those together. Um, and then I'm shooting on my my Rokinon 24mm lens. And actually, I need to give this lens an apology because I just shot with it last night. And I forgot how good it was. But I'll get to that in a minute when I'm talking about the Milky Way shoot. Um, so right now I'm shooting at uh, f11 with 100 ISO and a 250 second, one, 250 second of a shutter speed, 1 250th. Anyway, um, simple tech specs, I've got it taking a picture. I got it set to run for three hours and give me a 15 minute video. And so the, it does all the calculations. I think that's probably about a 15 or 20 second interval. Hours, 24 frames a second. My shooting interval is every 30 seconds. So I'm taking two pictures a minute, essentially. And I'm gonna do that for the next three hours. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this comes out. And um, all right, but anyway, now I'll come down to the beach and it's actually quite a bit windier now than it was this morning or last night when I was down here, but it's still nice, still a really nice day. It's mid fifties, one of the nicer days we've had in a while. And uh, welcome to my lake, beautiful Fair Lake, Michigan. So last night was super clear, not much in the way of clouds or humidity and it got down below freezing. So um, I wasn't too worried about the lenses fogging. And uh, so I took advantage. I set up a time-lapse of the Milky Way with that Rokinon. All right, I'm gonna come up off the beach a little bit because it's a little windy, might screw up my audio a little. Um, there we go, come in here. So yeah, anyway, that's where I shot. I shot, before I leave, I shot the Milky Way both of them right out here. Milky Way looking off toward the south, kind of southeast side of the lake, because that's where the Milky Way kind of rises out from behind there. And then it kind of comes out from behind there and then rolls over behind these trees. For the sunrise, I was looking almost straight east that way with my telephoto lens. So, but anyway, so for the Milky Way, I need to, for another shot, I want to do another shoot right there, exact, almost exact same composition, but, um, slightly longer no slightly brighter exposure but like slightly like one stop maybe one stop and uh 
Oh, started earlier. I started last night. I set up the time lapse and had it rolling by a little after 1.30 a.m. And the Milky Way had already just peaked above the trees. And what I want is the reveal of the Milky Way from behind the trees. So I think I need to start it more around 12.30. So that way it's still all just stars. And then the Milky Way comes up kind of like I did um, with the shot at the, at the club a few, about a week ago. Um, but it's kind of weird because that one, I started the time lapse at one and it was perfect. Like it was timed perfectly. So maybe I only need to do it one, but since I'm right here, I might just set it up at 1230 and just, that, I'll just get more. Like there's nothing wrong with having more to work with. That shot came out way, I think it's gonna come out way better than I was hoping it would. I have not used, so this is uh, my apology to the Rokinon lens. I have not used that lens in well over a year. And I initially bought it as a lens for uh, almost exclusively astrophotography, like nightscapes, uh, Milky Way stars, stuff like that, Northern Lights. I got it pretty much exclusively for that reason. And the first couple shots I got with it were good, but nothing, I just didn't really get to a good area or like have great nights for it. And so I kind of let that kind of make me think maybe the lens had something to do with it, which is stupid, I know. But uh, I, I was kind of looking for somewhere to place blame as to why my shots didn't come out. And, uh, and then I got a number of shoots in a row with it where I just could not for the life of me get either get the stars in focus or get the like get there to be enough of like as little of a trail as possible to where they still looked like pinpoints for the most part and i don't really know why that is i think because i know i was taking time to focus it right and do everything it's a completely manual lens so there's a aperture ring on it and it's all manual focus and i like i don't know it just i had trouble getting good shots off it and so i kind of just left it in my bag and didn't really use it for a year and actually last may when I was in Utah photographing the sunrise, or sunrise, the Milky Way down in the desert, I rented a couple lenses. I rented a couple Sam Sigma lenses, and I love those. And I've been wanting to get those to replace this one, but I figured, you know, I don't really have the money for that now. I'll go see if I can resurrect this uh, Rokinon and still and you can get some sort of usable shot, just so I know I still have a good lens. Now that brings me around. I used it last night, and I think I got it pin sharp. Um, the reason that I bought it exclusively for astrophotography is because pretty much every review I said that for 500 bucks, this is the sharpest, best, fastest lens that you can have for stars at, at the price point. Yeah, I let, I, I don't know, I really started to not like the lens, got, like I said, had some bad shoots and just kind of stopped using it. Um, but considering how I think this shoot last night is looking like it's going to come out, definitely going to start using this lens a lot more for astrophotography again um, and that's got me really really excited that's the first time lapse that's the sun or no that's the milky milky way time lapse i know i'm getting a little long-winded now um, but then the other time lapse i did was the sunrise looking east my goal with that was to get a sun star kind of coming up from behind the hill and through the trees kind of peeking through the trees as it rose and then peek above the trees and kind of light the scene up so the way that I set that one up is I swapped lenses. I took the Tokina, or sorry, I took the Rokinon off, put on my long Canon lens, and uh, and then on the front of that, on the front of the lens, I put a couple filters. I put two of my graduated filters to darken the sky, but leave the lake pretty much unaffected. And because the sunrises are very high contrast scenes, especially when it's clear or minimal cloud cover, and so the filters help me bring down the sky while still getting good exposure on the lake. And again, I think that shot came out fantastic. Um, not quite still what I have in mind of what I want to get, but still an A plus shot. I think the only difference I want to make with that shot now in the future 
is um, a little wider and focus and get a little bit more of the sky um, to allow for any clouds that might come over to capture light and then allow for more of the lake to catch light because I noticed in the photos when I was just going through the still images as the sun came up there was some mist like the lake was almost glass calm and there was some mist that in the time lapse will look like it's just kind of floating around right on the lake surface it's not a whole lot like it's not fog um, just kind of a little layer of mist right on the lake and uh, I want to try to highlight that a bit better and let and get and see a bit more of that so just going water getting a bit more lake in there making the star the sun a little bit smaller I think it'll give me a nicer sun star I think I'm too punched in so the sun itself is just too big in the frame to give me a good sun star um, so yeah, I just need to shoot a little water. And like I said, get some clouds coming in because there were some clouds that moved in early this morning and that's now the clouds that we have now, which is really just one single slate cloud. Like it's the same, this guy's the same exact color everywhere I look. It's really kind of bizarre. I don't really, you don't really see that a whole lot. That's really kind of bizarre. Three time lapses in less than 12 hours is pretty good. Uh, pretty happy with that. I've been shooting a lot more lately and I really like that I've been shooting a lot more I've been doing a lot of good shots too so yeah hoping to keep that momentum rolling buddy thanks for coming along and maybe the next one will be from somewhere a bit more interesting than my front yard <laughs> hopefully these this quarantine and this COVID doesn't last too much longer and you know I can get out you know doing this again in the big big mountains or you know new areas different you know go back to i want to go back to utah do some more night sky stuff i want to um go and go back down to the desert and just shoot in the desert period and go back to the mountains in general yeah i, I got a lot i want to do so hoping everybody gets a, who is sick gets a speedy recovery if you're not sick stay healthy stay safe you know be smart and uh you know let's try to get through this as quick as possible so we can all get back to doing the different things that we want to be doing so So, as it turns out, this video is not quite done. I, this time lapse that I set up down here in the yard looking up to the trees, I'm working on it right now. It's rendering out the actual time lapse sequence. And so I'm thinking about, we're just kind of thinking about other things I could do this evening. I actually might still set up a time lapse of the sunset. These really high clouds up here are starting to break up. And I'm thinking that might let some light through at the sunset. So I might do that, and I'll probably do that here pretty quick. Um, but I just got a shot that I've been looking for for a while, and I haven't yet gotten a good shot, and I would now say that I've gotten the first good shot, and that is a good shot of a loon. We have a, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the real, like the real term is, but like there's a pair of them that like this is their lake like they live here they're a permanent like they come back every year and like i mean they've been coming back for as long as i can remember and you know we all you know every time we used to see it you know i'd be like oh come down to the beach and look at it. like the loons out on the lake and then you like in early in the morning you can hear its call and there's definitely two of them like there's definitely multiple and uh anyway it's just always been a bird around here that like is fairly rare but we had one we have a pair that lives on the that lives on our lake so we see them all the time and it's just really cool and so we grew up with that and then when i got into photography it became like all right well now i got let's see what kind of shots i can get of it and just because you know for whatever reason i just haven't gotten a good shot of one yet and then tonight i was setting up our fire pit because i wanted to get some shots of the fire and you know just kind of do some cool playing around with that and I come outside to start collecting sticks and I look down to our lake and I'll be darned if the loon is not 20 feet off of our shore down here. And I saw it from inside the cabin. And so I ran upstairs through the long lens on and came outside quietly, but quickly. And I left Nora inside as much as I love her. I was worried. She might scare, scare him away before I got the shot. So I left her inside 
and I quickly and quietly made my way down to the lake. And I got uh, got kind of lucky. I got a shot through the trees of him, kind of right through there of him from up here, uh, but he went down. And so I took that time while he was down. I quickly scooted on down, down the way down to the beach there and kind of you know crouched down so that i was less you know i wasn't quite so big i don't know i don't really shoot birds that often it's not really um the like number one thing i'm in like interested in photographing but like i said this is a shot that like i mean it's still nature it's wildlife and it's a cool shot because it's got so much history for me and so yeah so i just crouched down and uh you know waited for him to come back up got a few shots but uh then, i mean he noticed me like there are smart they have he you know they're not dumb and he definitely noticed me so he kind of started swimming away but not too fast and like i could still get shots of him and i got shots of him a good ways down the lake as he went down and came back up or he or she went down and came back up um probably like four or five times i would say and you know but continuously getting further away so you know i got a couple shots um a couple of them i you know from the back of the camera they look like they came out but uh, I'll have to get them on the computer and blow them up to see if I got anything that's like really a uh, good shot. But I think I did. I think I finally did. It's behind you. Oh, good girl. All right, so the light above the trees down here, might, it might be off the trees, but it's the it's still catching the clouds and i mean it's too good to say no so uh, it's right here i got my it's easy enough to get my camera and it's definitely one of those shots that i gotta be i gotta take it when i got it oh my god the light is still fantastic i wish i'd have seen this 12 minutes ago i wish i didn't notice this and i wish the loon was back here that would be a hell of a shot too Wow, that was incredible. And the light's still fucking amazing. Holy smokes. I can't believe this. This day of photography has been absolutely nuts. I should have been down on torch tonight, but I will not complain about having that experience. So I, as good as this sunset is, that was incredible. I just got, I just photographed those two loons, both of them. The pair was back. It wasn't just the one I was photographing earlier. Um, the, it was both of them. And I was shoot, I decided to, I had to shoot the light over the trees, 
back there and I did and I turned around to kind of look at you know this see what all that light was doing and oh, swim, swimming right down the lake back toward me where both of the loon, well one popped up and I'm like oh my god the loon is like it's still here and I've got this amazing light in the sky and so I started snapping pictures and then like 30 seconds later the second one popped up and Okay, I gotta tame my excitement for a minute, put this down because I still want to get a shot looking this way. And I saw the loons, both of them. And I got shots as they came all the way down. And then as they went past me, they went maybe 20 feet in front of me. And then continued on south down the lake and kind of out into the middle. And they kind of started working apart. So it was a little harder to get a shot of both of them. But I got a shot of both of them pretty much the whole way. And I am so excited to get those on the computer and look at them because those might be some, actually that is easily the best moment I've ever had as in photography, period, as far as everything coming together and just me getting lucky and just being in the right place at the right time. Like to have that kind of light, that kind of like just perfect, random occurrence of a of wildlife that both loons like i said that we've been you know we've known these loons in a way since we were young like it's been the same pair every year and to get a photo of them as they come all the way down the light all the way down the lake just like <laughs> i did not think that was going to happen when i started shooting all right let's go look at these